Now then, when you're shopping for fancy new carbon wheels for your road race bike, there's one important decision to make, leaving price one side for a moment. And that is how deep a rim do you go for? And usually there are two popular options for a bike like this. You have a shallow rim like this, designed to be as lightweight as possible and optimized for climb performance. Or a deep section rim like this, designed to be as aero as possible, but clearly heavier than these wheels here. But which are right for you? Which are best? Are these really much faster than these on the flats? Are these really much faster on the climbs? In this video, we will find out. With some time testing on a local route here in the Cotswolds, they really put these through their paces. But first, let me share my ride impressions of these brand new wheels, and then we'll get to that data in detail. Because I've already ridden the Alpinist wheels in depth, and you see that video if you miss it down below, I'll focus on the deep session wheels and how to compare and whether they're faster or have any massive penalties compared to lighter weight wheels. And the difference is stark and noticeable straight away. They are a lot, lot faster. And you don't need a power meter to tell you how much. The numbers are lower, the speed is higher. As you expect from a deep session wheel. But going between two different wheel sets on the same bike, on the same roads, really highlights the difference and a massive benefit of the deep session wheels. So clearly they're faster. On flat roads, way, way faster. The high speed comes easier and it's easier to maintain those high speeds, low power at high speed. So clear benefit there. But here in the Cotswolds, the roads are really flat, up and down, undulating, rolling roads. Everything from long, shallow gradients to real lung busters, leg busters that are 25 or 30 percent in places. And on shallower climbs, these wheels still have an advantage over a shallower, lighter wheel. When you can keep your speed high on gradients up to five, six, seven percent, and stay in the big ring, these are definitely faster. It's only on a steep gradient where these don't quite feel as dancy, as lightweight, as nimble as the Alpinist wheels. So now I think it's a good time to dive into some testing data and see how two wheel sets compare on a typical challenging course that I've laid out for them. Okay, time for some comparative testing and crunch some numbers with the wheels to really find out how to compare. And to do that, I devise a course of 10.6 kilometers long with a long steady climb of about four or 5%, which you can ride in the big ring when you're feeling fit and feisty. Then a fast sweeping descent, quite a flat bit, then a really steep, brutal climb, and then finishing with a long steady climb not steep enough that you can go aero and tuck, you still have to pedal. So quite a good course, a real world course for me, for the riding I do here in the Cotswolds. And I use the same bike, the Carnago C68, same group set, the same tires and the same pressures and rode the course on the same day. And I use a power meter, got the Wahoo power meter pedals and a heart rate. And I try to keep the power and the heart rate as consistent and the same at key points on the course, but trying to keep your power in a very close band on such a rolling, uh, challenging course is very tricky. But here's the numbers, let's see how they compare. First up, the Alpinist wheels. And I average 27.7 kilometers per hour at 213 watts, with a heart rate of 142 beats per minute, giving me a total time of 23 minutes and two seconds. And then onto the Rapids, and my time was faster. 22 minutes and 23 seconds. My average speed was higher, as you'd expect, 28.4. My power output was also higher, 221, but my heart rate was the same, 142. So my heart rate is very consistent on both runs. The power is just higher on these. And diving into data a bit more, these were definitely faster on the shallow climb of four or five percent, faster on the descent, and then faster on the flat bit, and faster on the way back down. They only really lost time on a very steep climb where these wheels definitely had the advantage. But over that whole course, these wheels are definitely faster by quite a chunk. I mean, 40 seconds is quite a decent margin on a 10 kilometer course. And I will caveat this whole test by saying it's not the most scientific I know. There are still loads of variables that are tricky to keep on top of, but I tried to ride as consistent an effort level on each run as I could to refocus on the performance difference of the wheels. So unless you're riding up mountains all the time, the deeper section wheel might be the best choice. It's definitely faster. But, and it's always a but with deep session wheels, isn't there? 
crosswind stability is often the Achilles heel for any deep stretching wheel. Being buffed around in strong crosswinds, blustery conditions that are swirling around the country lanes you're on, causing handling woes and worse. But these are pretty good. They're no better and no worse than our deep session wheels I've ridden in the last year from Envy, a zip and so on. Very calm, very predictable, very easy to manage in strong winds. So for me, they pass that test just fine. So what makes these wheels so fast then? Let's dive into some more details. And it's all about the rim design. Deeper rims, generally speaking, are faster than shallower rims better at managing airflow at higher speeds. The most striking feature about these wheels is how they use a different dimension for the front versus the rear rim. So the front is a whopping 35 mil wide, which really dwarfs this 26 mil wide tire and is 51 mil deep. And then the rear is deeper at 60 mil, but narrower at 30 mil. And apparently, according to Reval, it's all about managing the airflow, which is different at the front of the bike than it is at the back of the bike. And despite the chunky deep dish looks, they're pretty lightweight just 1,500 grams for a pair. They both have a 21 mil internal rim width and they both use a hooked tubeless compatible rim design. Now the benefits are twofold. Firstly, you have a high pressure ceiling with a tubeless setup, 110 PSI versus the low 72.5 on a hook length design. And then you can also run a normal inner tube and tire setup. So if you don't want tubeless, you're not forced into it, but if you want tubeless and high pressures, you can do it with these. The rims come pre-taped with tubeless valves installed already and fitting these rapid air tires was a breeze. A normal track pump, they went up the first time of trying, no faffing, no hassle, none of the nightmares of tubeless tires of yesteryear. We also have aero spokes and external nipples for easy maintenance and the company's own aero hubs with DT Swiss internals including the Star Ratchet Free Hub at the back. So engagement is fantastic, really quick. I've been impressed with the comfort as well. Despite only running 26 mil wide tires, which is narrower than the 28, so I prefer to run on a regular basis. These are pretty smooth. I mean, the road I'm riding now is buttery smooth, but most of them, let me assure you, are far from smooth. Gravel, cracks, potholes, the lot. And despite the narrow tire, these are pretty smooth. Not as cushy as a wide tire, make no mistake. But for a deep session wheel, and they speed it off you, the comfort is acceptable. And what goes up must go down. And where aero wheels are clearly faster than the flat, they're also bloody quick on their way down. My goodness, these wheels absolutely rocket down the descents. Great in the corners, loads of lateral stiffness to ensure you can track your line you want through a tight swooping bend. No flex at all, and absolutely rocket fast on your favorite fast descents. So to answer my opening question in this video, which wheels are best? Well, if you want the fastest wheels over a rolling, challenging course with climbs, descents, and flat roads, then clearly, in my experience, in my testing, the deep perception wheels win by quite a healthy margin. I mean, 40 seconds over 10K is quite a lot of time. So for me, I'm gonna keep riding the deep session wheels that have proved themselves to me. But if you're a mountain goat or a weight weenie and you spend your time riding up big mountains, which you don't have in this part of the world, clearly, as you can see from behind me, then the lighter weight wheels might still be the right ones for you. But let me know which wheels you think are right for you. Which will you choose, given the choice of a deep session wheel or a lightweight shallow rim by leaving a comment down below. And if you wanna see a full video on the Alpinist wheels and how I tackled the same climb for seven days in a row, then check this video right here. It's definitely worth a watch. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel by hitting the button right here. But that's all for today. I'll see you again very soon. Thank you so much for watching.